welcome to this uh, presentation. Um, we thank the Lord for his blessings and uh, his providence upon us this year. I'll be starting a series on the prophets, but then uh, in this introductory part, that is part one and two, I'd like to look at um, the Bible, how do we study it, and uh, how I pray that this uh, presentation will be a blessing unto us. And so let us humbly pray and commit ourselves to prayer as we go through this. Lord in heaven, thank you for giving us the privilege of studying your word and uh, just looking at things that will help us to grow spiritually. And how I pray that uh, in this day, we may draw closer to thee as we study. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Um, we ask ourselves, why do we have a lot and uh, various interpretations of the Bible? What is the main problem, actually? And so I'd like us to look at um, something in uh, how do we study our Bible. And then uh, I just want to look at uh, the introductory part of it. And then uh, I'll be able to go to part two later on. I'll be able to go to part two uh, in the subsequent uh, presentation. And so without uh, much uh, delay, how, how do you study your Bible? I'd like to look at uh, the 14 Bible study rules of William Miller, and then I'll be expounding on them in part two. Uh, and looking at uh, Matthew chapter four, verses four, man shall not live on bread alone, but every word that's proceeded from the mouth of the Lord and Deuteronomy chapter eight, verse three, that uh, I gave them the manner to show them that I am the Lord who provides for them and man shall not live on bread alone, but by the word of God. The word that proceed, every word that proceeded from the mouth of the Lord. Now, in uh, rule number one, which I'll just go through the reading of the rules, then uh, I'll be able to expound on them later. Every word must have its proper bearing on the subject presented in the Bible, and that is Matthew chapter five, verse four, eighteen. When we study the Word of God, every word must have its proper bearing on the subject presented in the Bible. Uh, rule number two that um, Miller had is, uh, and uh, he was looking in Matthew chapter 5, verse 18, and just to read through them, and then I'll be able to expound on them later. All scripture is necessary and may be understood by diligent application and study. And uh, 2 Timothy three fifteen to 17. Again, nothing revealed in the scripture can or will be hid from those who ask in faith, not wavering and we shall be looking at these scriptures one by one uh he says that um, to understand doctrine bring all the scriptures together on the subject you wish to know then let every word have its proper influence and if you can form your theory without a contradiction you can be uh you cannot be in error and uh uh, scripture given. Rule number five that uh, William Miller had when he was studying the scripture is that uh, scripture must be it is own exposter since it is a rule of itself. If I depend on a teacher to expound it to me and he should gaze at its meaning or desire to have it so on account of his sectarian creed or to be thought wise, then his gazing desire creed or wisdom is my rule, not the Bible. And that is uh, number five of uh, the uh, William rule, Miller's rule of interpretation. Number six, God has revealed things to come by visions in figures and parables. And in this way, the same things are of 
of often times revealed again and again by different visions or in different figures and parables. If you wish to understand them, you must combine them all in one. Very impressive. And uh, you will find that in the sanctuary, the, the visions, the figures are used and the figures must go together with the parables and they must go together with the visions. When you are going through the sanctuary figures, they should align with the visions and the parables. And uh, we shall be able to look at this when we are dealing with the sanctuary and how these things are, are fit as the hand and the glove. And uh, number seven, visions are always mentioned as visions, 2 Corinthians 12, 1. And uh, figurative always have a figurative meaning and are used much in prophecy to represent future things, times, and events, such as mountains, meaning governments, beasts, meaning kingdoms, waters, meaning people, lambs, meaning word of God, day, meaning a year, and uh, verses are given. Rule number nine, parables are used as comparison to illustrate subjects and must be explained in the same way as figures by the subject and Bible. Number 10, figures sometimes have two or more different significations as day is used in a figurative sense to represent three different periods of time. Indefinite, definite a day for a year, day for a thousand years. If you put on the right construction, it will harmonize with the Bible and make good sense. Otherwise, it will not. Rule number 11, how to know when a word is used figuratively. If it makes good sense as it stands and does not violate, it, and it does not violence to the symbol laws of nature, then it must be understood literally, if not figuratively. 12. To learn the true meaning of figures, trace your figurative word through your Bible and where you find it, explain, put it on your figures, and if it makes good sense, you need look no further. If not, look again. Rule number 13. To know whether we have the true historical event for the fulfillment of a prophecy, if you find a very if you find every word of prophecy after the figures are understood is literally fulfilled, then you may know that you are your history uh, is the true event. But if one word lacks a fulfillment, then you must look for another event or wait, it is future development. For God takes care that history and prophecy don't agree so that the true believing children of God may never be ashamed. Number 14. The most important rule of all is that you must have faith. It must be a faith that requires us sacrifices and if tried will give up the dearest object on earth, the world and all it is desires, character, living occupation, uh, friends, home, comforts and worldly honors. And this rule number 14 is the most important rule and it's the most uh, one which is not followed. If any of this should hinder our believing any part of God's word, it will show our faith to be in vain. Nor can we ever believe so long as one of these motives lies lacking in our hearts. We must believe that God will never forfeit his word and we can have confidence that he that takes notices of the sparrows and numbers the heirs of our head will guard the translation of his own word and throw a bar around it and prevent those who sincerely trust in God and put implicit confidence in his word from erring far from the truth, though they may not understand Hebrew or Greek. And so uh, talking about just uh, faith, uh, I like to say this. Talking about faith, uh, I like to say this. In the book of Hebrews, in the book of Hebrews, uh, this is what we are told. Um, the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 6, talking about rule number 14, which is the most important rule about faith. I like just to point at this without passing it in Hebrews chapter 
11 verses 6 but without faith it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. We must diligently search for the Lord and he is a rewarder of those who diligently search him. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. And so rule number 14 is the most important rule of all rules that every time we approach God and approach his word, we must approach him on his own terms by faith. And uh, also, in the book of um, that is in the book of Romans chapter 14 Romans 14 verses 23 uh, and the last verse says for to whatsoever is not of faith is sin if we do things and we don't do them out of faith then that is sin and uh, the same book romans chapter 10 uh, this is uh, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of god faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. Faith does not come out of reading novels. Faith does not come about by reading commentaries. Faith does not come by trusting that some men are endowed with a special gift than the others. Faith does not come because of your favorite preacher. Faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. And so those who study the word of God must rely implicitly on God for he is a rewarder of them that seeketh him diligently. And they must uh, 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 have faith that um, uh, 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 they will be able to get that which they ask. For he said that uh, ask and it shall be given, seek and uh, uh, you shall find. And so uh, as we go through how to study the Bible, in this series where also I'll be looking at um, the looking at um, the prophets uh, and, and more so coming to do an apologetic on uh, E.G. White and her works, uh, I want us first to go through these uh, uh, rules of uh, how do we study the word of God. Not only the um, the, the written word, the canonical word, but uh, the uncanonical word, those things that uh, have been spoken of by prophets and inspired teachers which have not been written in the word of God. How do we come to uh, believe that um, they are also inspired or how do we believe, how do we come to marry them with uh, the Bible itself? And it is after going through these rules that uh, we shall be able to differentiate between a true and a false prophet. Just something to think of as uh, we, we bring this to a close is this. In uh, Council to Writers and Editors, page 39, paragraph 3, and there are many in the church who take it for granted that they understand what they believe, but until... Uh, Conrovers arises, they do not know their own weaknesses. Weakness. When separated from those of like faith and compelled to stand singly and alone to explain their belief, they will be surprised to see how confused are their ideas of what they had accepted as truth. Certain it is that uh, there has been among us a departure from the living God and a turning to men, putting human wisdom in place of divine. God will arouse his people. If other means fail, heresies will come in among them, which will sift them, separating the chaff from the wheat. The Lord calls upon all who believe his word to awake out of sleep. Precious light has come appropriate for this time. It is Bible truth, showing the perils that are right upon us. This light should lead us to a diligent study of the scriptures and a most critical examination of the positions which we hold. There are people who think that... Um, they will believe a truth because certain so-and-so believes in that truth. 
but far be it that a people will start believing in things because some prominent minister believes in them, some favorite friend believes in them, and all this stuff that we hear, oh, I just believe because so and so believes in them. We are in the days when uh, Christ said that there will be a lot of false teachers, a lot of false prophets, and we need to be sure what we believe is truth. And uh, Peter says, uh, I'd just like to sh sh share what uh, Peter says. Um, let us go to First Peter 3.15. First Peter uh, 3.15. We are told, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. We sanctify the Lord in our heart that we may be able to answer every man. And uh, we, we cannot afford when asked the hope we have that uh, we can't answer because so and so have this hope, so I have this hope. We have to humbly answer of the hope that we have. Also, Paul admonishing Timothy. This is um, what um, uh, Paul tells Timothy. Uh, in uh, 2 Timothy 3.16, 2 Timothy, from verse 15, And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Jesus Christ, in Christ Jesus. All scriptures given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So scripture is given us for reproof and for admonition to guide us, to make us wise unto salvation. And so we cannot afford to study the scriptures haphazardly and uh, to rely on somebody else to uh, tell us the meaning of uh, the scriptures. Although God has given different gifts into the church, but yet the gifts are not to replace uh, the personal piety and uh, the personal study of um, the scriptures. And so we are told uh, we are told in uh, 2 Timothy 2.15, this is uh, what we are told. 2 Timothy 2.15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And so this is the admonition we are being given that we should study the word of God. So that we may not be ashamed at all that we may rightly divide the word of truth, a workman that needed no term to be uh, ashamed. And then uh, wh why should we study even this word? Why should we study this word? Why is it so important to study this word? In uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 1, chapter 1, verse 11, searching what of what manner or time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the suffering of Christ and the glory that should follow. And so we are told of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching what or what manner of time the spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify. And so they studied these things. They were able to search these things. You find that uh, Jeremiah was, Daniel was able to study the scroll of Jeremiah, searching to know if these things are so. And the spirit of Christ is the spirit that gave 
uh, authorship or gave um, inspiration of writing these scriptures. That is why we should study it. And when we study it with the spirit of Christ, we shall be able to know that which is truth. In uh, in uh, in Second uh, Peter one verse nineteen. In Second Peter chapter one verse nineteen, we are told. We have also a more sure word of prophecy where unto you do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star rise in your heart. Knowing this first that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in all time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So these scriptures were given by holy men as they were moved by the Spirit of God. They were not given by the will of man. And the same spirit that moved them is the same spirit that the Lord has promised to give his children so that they may be able to understand the things they read, so that they may not be deceived by false teachers and they may not go astray, but they may know the right way and be able to follow uh, it. And so uh, we are told those who are engaged in proclaiming the third angel's message are searching the scripture upon the same plan that Father Miller adopted. In the little book entitled Views of the Prophecies on Prophetic Chronology, Father Miller gives the following simple but intelligent and important rules for Bible study and interpretation. And then she goes ahead to give every word must have its proper bearing on the subject presented in the Bible. All scripture is necessary and may be understood by diligent application and study. Nothing revealed in scripture can or will be hid for those who ask in faith, not wavering. To understand a doctrine, bring all the scriptures together on the subject you wish to know. Then let every word have its proper influence. And if you can form your theory without a contradiction, you cannot be in error. Scripture must be its own expositor since it is a, a rule of itself. If I depend on a teacher to expound to me, and should gaze at its meaning or desire to have it so on account of his sectarian creed or to be thought wise, then his gazing desire, creed or wisdom is my rule and not the Bible. And so the above is a portion of these rules and in our study of the Bible, we shall all do well to heed the principles set forth. And then um, when you go to the book of uh, John, the, the, the letters of John, just want to read something in the letters of John. Uh, Uh, in the letters of John, uh, the second uh, chapter, First John chapter 2, this is um, what we have about um, the scriptures. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. But the anointing which you have Received of him abideth in you, and you need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, you shall abide in him. So God has given us an anointing, and we need no teacher to teach us. And even though he has given these gifts, and we have teachers in, in the Bible, we need not to rely on the teachers. We need to rely on the Holy Spirit of God to be able to be taught all things. And so he has given us the anointing. And if we rely on him, he shall be able to show us what is truth and who are even the true teachers of his word. Again, I saw that the Bible did bring to view just such a savior as I needed. And I was perplexed to find how an uninspired book should develop principles so perfectly adapted to the ones of a fallen world. I was constrained to admit that the scriptures might be a revelation from God. This is E.G. White confessing the validity of the scriptures. They became my delight and in Jesus I found a friend. The savior became to me the chiefest among 10,000 and the scriptures which before were dark and contradictory now became the lamp to my feet and a light to my path. My mind became settled and satisfied. I found the Lord God to be a rock in the midst of the ocean of life. The Bible now became my chief study, and I can truly say I searched it with a great delight. I found the half was never told me. I wondered why I had not seen its beauty and glory before, and marveled that I could have 
ever rejected it, I found everything revealed that my heart could desire and a remedy for every disease of the soul. I lost all taste of other reading and applied my heart to get wisdom from God. This is some um, uh, Sylvester Bliss memoirs of uh, William Miller uh, uh, um, confessing what he found in the scriptures and then E.G. White reporting it in uh, Great Controversy, page 319, paragraph 2 and 3. In paragraph 3, she says of Miller, Miller publicly professed his faith in the religion which he had despised, but his infidel associates were not slow to bring forward all those arguments which he himself had often urged against the divine authority of the scriptures. He was not then prepared to under them, but he reasoned that if the Bible is a revelation from God, it must be consistent with itself and that as it was given for man's instruction, it must be adapted to his, to his understanding. He determined to study the scriptures for himself and ascertain if every apparent contradiction could be harmonized. So that is the life of Mila and uh, how he came to love uh, the Bible. Again, um. Uh, Continuing on about uh, the confession of Miller in uh, Great Controversy 320, paragraph 1, thus we read um, this. Endeavoring to lay aside all preconceived opinions and dispensing with commentaries, he compared scripture with scripture by the aid of the marginal references and the concordance. He pursued his study in a regular and methodical manner. Beginning with Genesis and reading verse by verse, he proceeded no faster than the meaning of the several passages so unfolded as to leave him free from all embarrassment. When he found anything obscure, it was his custom to compare it with every other text which seemed to have any reference to the matter under consideration. Every word was permitted to have its proper bearing upon the subject of the text, Miller's first rule. And if his view of it harmonized with every collateral passage, it ceased to be diff a difficulty, Miller's fourth rule. Thus, whenever he met with a passage hard to be understood, he found an explanation in some other portion of the scriptures. That was his rule number 12. As he studied with earnest prayer for divine enlightenment, that which had before appeared dark to his understanding was made clear. That is third rule. He experienced the truth of the psalmist world, the entrance of thy worlds giveth light, it giveth understanding unto the simple. And uh, Great Controversy, page 320, paragraph 2, with intense interest he studied the books of Daniel and Revelation, employing the same principles of interpretation as in other scriptures, and found, to his great joy, that the prophetic symbols could be understood. He saw that the prophecies, so far as they had been fulfilled, had been uh, fulfilled literally, that all the various figures, metaphors, parables, similitude were either explained in their immediate connection or the terms in which they were expressed were defined in other scriptures. And when thus explained were to be literally understood, I was thus satisfied, he says, that the Bible is a system of revealed truths so clearly and simply given that the way, wayfaring man, though a fool, need not to err therein. Bliss, page 70. Link after link of the chain of the truth rewarded his efforts as step by step he traced down the great lines of prophecy. Angels of heaven were guiding his mind and opening the scriptures to his understanding. And then Mr. Miller felt, uh, this is the memoirs of uh, Miller, page uh, 68 by Sylvester Bliss. Uh, Mr. Miller felt such a towns in their full force he was at first perplexed, but on reflection, he considered that if the Bible is a revelation of God, it must be consistent with itself. All its parts must harmonize, must have been given for man's instruction, and consequently must be adapted to his understanding. He therefore said, give me time and I'll harmonize all those apparent contradictions to my own satisfaction, or I'll be a dazed still. He then devoted himself to the prayerful reading of the word. He laid aside all commentaries and used the marginal references and his concordance as his only helps. He saw that he must distinguish between the Bible and all the peculiar and partisan interpretations of it. The Bible was older than them all, must be above them all, and he placed it there. He saw that it must correct all interpretations 
and in correcting them, its own pure light will shine without the mists which contradictory beliefs had involved it in. He resolved to lay aside all preconceived opinions and to receive with childlike simplicity, the natural and obvious meaning of scripture. He pursued the study of the Bible with the most intense interest, whole nights as well as days being devoted to that object, at times delighted with the truth which shone forth from the sacred volume, making clear to his understanding the great plan of God for the redemption of fallen man, and at times puzzled and almost distracted by seemingly inexplicable or contradictory passages, he persevered until the explanation of his great principle of interpretation was triumphant. He became puzzled only to be delighted and delighted only to persevere the more in penetrating its beauties and mysteries. This is uh, Liz Sylvester Bliss, Memoirs of William Miller, page 69, paragraph 1. And then... Uh, uh, James White, this is, um, this is James White, and uh, I just want to read what he had to say about uh, William Miller. In, uh, in uh, Sketches of the Christian Life, and labors of William Miller, sketches of the Christian life and public labors of William Miller. This is um, what um, James White says. And uh, yes, sketches of life and uh, sketches of the Christian life and public labors of William Miller. Uh, page uh, 48, paragraph 1, James White says, In this way I pursued the study of the Bible in my first perusal of it for about two years and was fully satisfied that it is it is own interpreter. I found that by a comparison of scripture with history, all the prophecies as far as they had been fulfilled had been fulfilled literally, that all the various figures, metaphors, parables, similitude, it is of the Bible were either explained in their immediate connection or the terms in which they were expressed were defined in other portions of the word, and when thus explained, are to be literally understood in accordance with such an explanation. I was thus satisfied that the Bible is a system of revealed truth, so clearly and simply given that the way wayfaring man, though a fool need not to add therein, in thus continuing the study, I adopted the following. And um, this is... Um, uh, This is uh, the second Advent manual. Uh, this is written by Apollo Hales. The second Advent manual by Apollo Hale. The second Advent manual by Apollo Hales. It says, in studying the Bible, I have found the following rules to be great service to myself and now give them to the public by special request. Every rule should be well studied in connection with the scriptures, scripture references, if the Bible student will be at all benefited by them all. This is Apollo Health, uh, and this is the second Advent Manual, page 102, paragraph 10, talking about um, Mila also. And so, uh, as we shall, we shall continue exploring the issue of the prophets, because the series is on the prophets. And uh, first of all, we have to lay a good ground of how to study the Bible so that when we introduce the prophets and even non-canonical uh, prophets, we will see if really they fit in the Bible or not fit in the Bible. And my burden is to do an um, apologetic uh, series on the gift of uh, Sister White and see uh, how far can we go with her and how far can not we not go with uh, her writings. And so uh, I'd like to end this in the in the Bible 
we are told in um, Isaiah chapter 8 verse um, 16 bind up the testimony seal the law among my disciples and why is this verse so important because we shall see the place of the testimony whether it be of eg white whether it be of who um how it is important that they be sealed among the disciples of jesus christ the testimony and the law we must be bound by the testimony and we must be sealed with the law. And so we shall see how the testimony marry with the law. The law being the totality of the word of God. And the testimony being um, the, the confession of uh, people who had various gifts in the church. And how this strengthens us. Because in Revelation chapter 12, we are told that they overcome. They overcame in uh, Revelation chapter 12. Um we find that in verse 11, Revelation 12, 1, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. And so we are told, bind up the testimony, seal the law among the disciples. And some of these testimonies are already in the Bible. Some of them are non-canonical. And so how do we know that they are inspired? This, is, this will be the burden of this series. And then um, in uh, verse 20, uh, this is, um, allow me to do this. In verse 20, this is what we are told. Uh, Isaiah chapter 8 verse 20. The, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. So to the law and to the testimony. So, the law and the testimony have to speak the same voice. Otherwise, we will not have the light. And if we believe the testimony of somebody which is not inspired, still there is no light in us. And so the law, to the law and to the testimony, if we do not speak according to this word, there is no light in us. And then uh, just to conclude, uh, Isaiah 28 For precept must be upon precept, verse 10, precept upon precept, line upon line. Here a little and there a little. This is how we study our scriptures. But what I wanted to look at also is Isaiah 28, verse 9. Who shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. There is no way babies will understand doctrines. They have to be taken step by step. And so our way of studying the scriptures and explaining to them will have also to consider that doctrines, the reason why we are having a lot of controversies and a lot of ministries which do not agree, it is because doctrines are trying to be taught to children rather than people who have been weaned out of breath, breast. People who can search a little here and little there and bring the harmony. First of all, consider the context, the history, the people whom it was being written to, uh, the event, and why were they being written to. After bringing all this together, then you can be able to form a doctrine which is without contradiction. But um, these are the things that we do not put into consideration. And when we come together to study the scripture, somebody understands this and another one understands that, and you find that there's a lot of uh, uh, disharmony among those who are reading the scripture because there's no humbling uh, themselves together to be taught and to read the Bible the way it is. And so may the good Lord be able to guide us as we shall be going through this series, the prophets, and uh, trying to understand, can we be able to prove who are the true teachers and false teachers true prophets and false prophets after laying down the foundation of uh, uh, the Bible, how it should be studied. Otherwise, may the Lord bless us. And uh, I pray that um, it will be a blessing as we come together to study these things. Shall we be able to pray? Again, our Heavenly Father, thank you that uh, 
you have given us the inspired word to guide us in these end times. More so when there's a lot of falsehood and contradictions. We pray that uh, we may come to have an upper room experience that we may see eye to eye, as you say, that the watchmen shall see eye to eye. And so I praise your name for giving us an opportunity again to study. They will be done on earth. Inspire us with the same spirit that inspired the authoring of your word. So Lord, give us the same spirit. It is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.